Okay, welcome back on board everyone. I am still Evil Tim and this is still Let's Play Perfect Dark, so let's play Perfect Dark. Today we're off to Daytime Central in order to extract ourselves from it. We've got to uh, get to the 4A elevator. We've got to activate a different elevator. We've got to shoot down the Daytime gunship, which is opening the building being evil. We've got to kill the bodyguards who are inside the building being evil. And then we have to exit the building so that it can stand around being evil. Lots of evil happening, but firstly, let's get back to that guard we talked about in the previous mission, because we all want to know his fate, I'm sure, which is that he's lying there. I guess Joanna just dragged him back on board again so that he could do this Sound the alarm. She's here. Night oh. yeah that's great um, apparently that has more effect than say a massive gunfight in the lobby or a series of huge explosions in the basement oh come on Joanna you said lights out they're just trying to be nice to you now and you're just going to kill them all anyway because she's vicious and evil you see so they've turned out all the lights now uh, God only knows why they decided to do this since none of the guards in this lobby actually have night vision goggles I guess they just decided to give Joanna an advantage for a full minute in which she could slaughter all of them now, if you can slaughter all of them in just a minute, then you gain all of the secret stuff in the level, including a keycard, which will allow us to destroy the level in many ways. Okay, so the first reward in this level is that you have to kill the first five guards without being seen. I think there might be a time limit to it as well, I'm not sure. The second reward in this level is that you have to kill all the guards without being seen, which in Perfect Agent you have one minute to do, in Secret Agent you have a minute and a half, and in Agent you have forever and a day, because it, the lights never come on at all. Okay, so if we're killing the first five guards in a chronological order, we get a Magnum, that is our first reward. Now, we should actually have failed the second part, because we fired a bullet past that guy's head back there, however, it's going to give it to me anyway, because I'm just that damn awesome. It can't deny me. Of course it can't. So, now they turn the lights back on, and we have to pick up all the guards' CMP-150s from behind these giant riot shields that they've somehow shipped in in the interim. And, yeah, they call out the special guard for that. You know, not the huge gunfight in the basement. Nothing like that, no. The most secret things are guarded by a couple of guys with dragons. It's only now they decide they're going to call in the big guns. Now it's already too late. So we're going to leave Dr. Carroll down there, from whence he will inexplicably not be kidnapped, despite all precedent to the former. Because he's apparently fitted with um, some very, very well-equipped suicide routines. Now in a minute you're going to see a fun little thing with the Magnum, which is that uh, it is apparently so awesome that regardless of how many bullets you have, we have five, she's going to put six in it anyway. It doesn't matter, it needs six bullets, it hungers for ammunition. Now it works in much the same way as the one in gold. I did, i.e. it fires through walls and it's awesome and powerful, and secondary fire is the same old pistol where it's the same old strength and it buggers up glass and gives us powers of vandalism. Now, that keycard we picked up, it allows us firstly to open the foyer doors, demonstrating that the rest of the building doesn't exist, neither does the rest of the street, and in a minute, as we will see, neither does the rest of the world. This seems something of a workplace safety hazard. We should probably get on to someone about this, because I feel removing the entire world from the vicinity of your building is rather hazardous and antisocial. So the second door it opens is this one, the security room door. We're probably also not supposed to be able to open this door, because, as you can see, they haven't put the comms up back, they haven't put any of the computers back, and there's a rocket launcher down here. Now, this rocket launcher is supposed to appear on the roof in agent mode. In secret agent and perfect agent mode, however, the crates appear there instead. It's rather odd. You might also notice that the handle on the side of the rocket launcher is the handle that we've seen previously on the EMP mines. We'll leave Dr. Carroll down there again to a fate of loneliness and death, and we'll demonstrate the other fire mode of this thing, which is a targeted rocket. We will demonstrate it on the gunship, which apparently believes it's here to try to arrest us, but isn't really very cottoning onto the whole idea. Okay, we surrender. No, you don't. Okay, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty much the approach that they have to this. Okay, surrender or die. Incidentally, you're not allowed to do the first one. No. So, instead, we're going to make him die. We're going to make him die by using our targeted rocket. The targeted rocket, the targeting part looks like the CMP-150. If you strafe backwards, then it will drop down and go really, really slowly, which is what it did there and why we lost that one. But we get it with the second shot. So yes, it only takes one hit. It's really quite pathetic. And you can shoot it down, even if you don't have the rocket launch, you can shoot it down fairly easily, even with regular gunfire. It takes about 80 pistol shots. It's pathetic. So, now we think our first uh, bodyguards, aside from those two in the lobby, who don't count because they are inert and impossible to destroy. So we're going to fire our magnum at them, and shortly we will admire Dr. Carroll's suicidal tendencies as he goes through a locked door, purely so that he can get shot in the back with a shotgun. Stupid creature. So we are going to, once again, banish him back down to the lobby in a moment, but firstly we have to gun down the these guards. See, the door's locked. It even says so, but he came through it. There's no other way he could have got there. So we'll kill her off. Now, this is the perfect days of specific um, objective here. You have to just press the button there and then bugger off. 
Now that would be um, an objective if it weren't for the fact that you have to go into that room in every difficulty anyway, because you have to kill off all the bodyguards, so, you know, it's really rather stupid. But anyway, it's not like that keycard even opens all the doors in the level, so you can't say that, uh, oh well, they, ma they maybe just screwed it up and said it opens every door. No, it doesn't, because that door over there is still locked. It's silly. So, that there is open, but empty. They have assumed that we have acquired the laptop gun, or someone else has. You, meanwhile, are banished. Go away. So, now we can make our way up in this elevator. Now, if you happen to have a spare rocket lurking around, you can actually fire a shot at those riot shields there and make this a hell of a lot easier for yourself by making it so that you can go through there and ambush everyone from behind, but we are going to play it fairly, so we're shooting down the hovercopter uh, two floors before we should be able to. Now, on this floor he has a separate message. He can he says, surrender or die fugitive. On this floor he says, give it up now. And he has an extra message for the roof, but we're going to hear that one in due time. So, that'll be very exciting for all of you, I'm sure. Now, let's make our way through these offices again, and there are more of these guards to take out. Now, I'm not going to actually use the shotgun here, because all of the... Um, uh, Cassandra's personal bodyguards are equipped with shotguns as well, and to be honest, trying to fight multiple enemies with shotguns when you have a shotgun is sort of like trying to win an ass kicking contest with your pelvis on backwards. It's just not a good idea. So, we're going to use it once just to show it off. I will show off its secondary fire function the next time it shows up, I promise, by the power of God. So, let us get that. Here is the shotgun. Hooray! It's a fairly generic video game shotgun. Reloads one shell at a time. Okay, they have a whole conversation there, actually. It's, that's not how it goes. Yes, it is. Give it to me, you're doing it wrong. Oh, no, we're too late. No, it's, uh, will you two just hurry up? Oh, no, we're too late. She's here. So, this sort of implies that they were going to try and fire a rocket launcher at Joanna indoors, which is strange of them. Anyway, we've got a new weapon here, which is the grenade. We just had to throw it there, because this is an item trading sequence grenade, which we used to go and get a dragon. Now, the grenade has two fire modes. It's got a four-second fuse, and the other mode is called proximity pinball, in that it bounces around uncontrollably, and one of two things happens. Either it will bounce and glitch straight through a wall, or it will bounce back and kill you. The likelihood of it doing something actually useful is statistically insignificant. I really don't know why they bothered putting it there. 